the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. As you know, we've been doing a series of interviews with mining company CEOs because there's no other sector, in my opinion, in the market that is as undervalued and underappreciated as this one. And with us now is John Burgos, he's CEO of Northern Free Gold, a Canadian miner on the TSX venture, and here to talk about what's going on with Northern Free Gold. Hey, John, how are you today? I'm doing great. It's uh, you know, it's a good day uh, when gold's up, uh, you know, fifty bucks <laughs> over the last couple of days. Yeah, that'll... and Aki supporting uh, QE3. Uh, so it's a very positive move uh, for commodities and metals, and uh, we will assume at some point that'll come through to the uh, the mining stocks more broadly. It certainly had a a good impact in the last day or two, but I, my sense is a lot of money sitting on the sidelines waiting to see where. Uh, QE3 would go, and that's going to probably filter down to the um, junior resource uh, companies at some point in, in the near term. Yeah, there's no surprises, I guess, with all the uh, dire uh, financial situation of all of the uh, the major economies in the world, even, uh, even in Asia, that uh, money printing seems to be what, uh, what they do best and the only uh, bullet left in the gun. Well, they're going to try whatever they can, obviously, to uh, deal with the uh, the issue of uh, a lack of growth, particularly in the um, developed nations. And uh, you know, printing money is is a, a tried and tested method. We we all know and we've seen the consequences in in the past, historically, over several hundred of years. So I don't see that it's going to be any different this time going around. So um, you know, I think for uh, gold. A predominantly gold company. We're about 65% uh, of our metal value is gold. The balance is copper and um, molybdenum and some silver. But uh, for a predominantly gold company, I think that's a very positive for us over over the next sort of you know 12 12 to 18 months. Um, hopefully that'll over underpin the metal prices. Um, and then longer term for us, obviously, it really comes down to the uh, the type of asset we have and the location and uh, what we as a management team can do to develop our project. Absolutely. And tell us a little bit about Northern Free Gold Resources. Uh, you know, what... Sure. It's, um, we're, we're a listed company um, based in Canada, up in Vancouver. We, uh, are, we trade on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture. Ticker symbol is uh, NFR. We also trade on the OTCQX, where the uh, ticker is uh, NFRGF. We were formed in um, about 06. Um, so we've been around for uh, six years. Um, the company has a very sizable existing gold and copper and molybdenum and silver resource in the Yukon. So we are operating in uh, Canadian jurisdiction. It's low risk, doesn't have any of the uh, resource national nationalism issues that you've seen in uh, some uh, of the uh, more unsavory countries around the world. The Yukon is a old historical uh, mining district going back uh, over 100 years to the original gold rush there at the end of the last uh, end of the 19th century. So you know you've got a, a history of gold mining. So we're operating in a known area with uh, known mineralization over um, a very large extent, and uh, there are lots of uh, mining companies operating in our jurisdiction and near us. It's copper mines owned by uh, majors like Capstone and silver mines from uh, companies like Alexco. So, you know, it's a good place, a good environment. Um, the Yukon is, is in northern Canada. Uh, so one of the key uh, issues is infrastructure, and we are very well situated. We're on a government-maintained road, a few-hour drive north of the um, capital. So we've got very good access to um, the key mining service providers like uh, drilling companies, 
um, assay laboratories uh, that are all located uh, in the capital in Whitehorse. Um, the project itself uh, is, is large. We are now the second largest gold and copper resource in the Yukon. Um, if you look at this on a worldwide basis, the ounces we have in the ground have probably put us in the top. On a combined basis with the two deposits we have, uh, we're probably in the top uh, 300 um, in the world. So, I mean, this is a, a pretty sizable resource uh, we have in total. Three million ounces of, uh, of gold, indicated in third, um, across two deposits. And we have over 400 million pounds of copper and another 90 million pounds of uh, molybdenum and, uh, and some silver. So if you look at it on a, a gold equivalent basis, it's around 6 million ounces uh, of gold equivalent. Again, very sizable uh, existing resource. And the key issue is that's not all we're going to find. I think we've got a lot of uh, potential based on the uh, footprint of those two deposits in the Yukon and the land that we have. We uh, we control over 200 square kilometers, and the uh, ounces we have are only spread over about 30 kilometers so far. We think there's a lot of upside to uh, increase the tonnage and the ounces that we have over the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah, so it's clearly a world-class deposit, and it's kind of interesting because you got into this company with – uh, having a Wall Street background. Just tell us how you got into uh, the company. Sure. Well, you know, I've been on uh, Wall Street um, for probably 18 years with groups like Merrill Lynch and Deutsche Bank. Uh, but I also had experience um, uh, running uh, private resource companies before and also uh, co-managed an investment fund. So I've got sort of investment buy-side experience. Um the Wall Street uh, roles have given me some exposure uh, in the last sort of 10 years with uh, uh, public uh, resource companies and particularly the junior Canadian juniors. Uh, I worked with a number of them as, as clients of mine, groups like Nova Gold, and uh, was approached by some board directors who uh, I had worked with previously, one of whom was uh, on the board of Northern Free Gold. And, um, they um, approached me regarding uh, the CEO role. The uh, opportunity looked uh, interesting for a number of reasons. What really attracted me to this was just the valuation. If you look at the amount of ounces we have um, of gold, around three million indicated in third, we've got an enterprise value of uh, approximately 17, 18 million. So we're trading at, uh, you know, less the cash, just uh, just uh, just over four. Uh, four dollars a gold ounce in the ground um, so that's a, a very very low valuation and that's for a company you know operating in a safe jurisdiction in Canada so when I looked at this and evaluated the proposition it really came down to um, what were the risks um, you know junior gold mining clearly are at the more speculative investment end um, uh, and there are certain things that can go wrong but when you've got an existing resource of size uh, with good uh, infrastructure around you, uh, with a potentially a fair amount of blue sky to grow the size of that resource, to me it looked like uh, a really wonderful opportunity to come on board at a fairly low price. Uh, and I uh, made that decision at the end of last year. You know, obviously I can't control the macroeconomic environment, so we had a, a tough uh, and challenging six months with gold prices uh, falling and um, resource companies somewhat out of favor, but that seems to have turned in the last uh, month or two. And, you know, for us, the project's developing very rapidly and we had, you know, lots of exciting news coming out. So uh, I think for us, it's a good place to, for me, it's a good place to be. It sounds great. And you also got some really good news in the past couple of days. Absolutely. Uh, we put out some uh, very encouraging uh, metallurgical uh, results um, demonstrating uh, the value of the, uh, the gold, copper, and uh, molybdenum we have in silver. Uh, when, you, when you have a deposit, uh, one of the key, key uh, questions obviously is how much do you have, how many ounces do you have, but the second question that is usually asked is, um, is uh, metallurgy. Can you recover that? Um, what are your recovery rates? And we um, just uh, announced a revenue, which is a gold, uh, copper, molybdenum deposit, uh, that we have uh, really exceptional recovery rates of 92% for copper, 
um, and uh, over 81% for, lin- for molybdenum and 74% for gold, which for the type of deposit we have, which is a, a gold, uh, a copper, um, dominant porphyry, those results compare very much in the very top quartile of similar porphyries in North America. So I think um, you know we are extremely pleased by the results. Uh, they are preliminary, uh, and typically we would do more lab work and uh, and hope to improve on those uh, numbers over time. But we're uh, encouraged by it. We uh, will be putting out news in the next. Uh, couple of weeks on the other deposit we have, which is right next to it. It's an adjacent deposit. Uh, that's nucleus, and that is a, a gold dominant zone. It's about 80, 80 to 85% gold. Um, and uh, so that will be metallurgical work on that uh, deposit coming up. And this is, uh, you know, this has been a six-month exercise. So for us, it's a key milestone in the evolution of the company to be able to demonstrate not only to m- the market, but also down the road to potential uh, mining partners uh, that we have very strong uh, metallurgical uh, recovery numbers is, 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 is was very critical to our development. Yeah, and that kind of brings us to the next topic, which is long-term strategy, the company, and the management that's in place to take advantage of that strategy or, or implement it. So, you know, we've got a, a very large um, uh, resource already, but we really want to see if we can double the size of the uh, tonnage and double the size of the ounces we have. Uh, for a gold dominant porphyry, it would be you know good to get towards 5 million uh, ounces of gold. So the question in our minds is how are we going to achieve that? Um, and then if we get to those size of numbers, you know you really are in a very world-class category for a, a deposit. Um, these projects, though, um, uh, when you turn these into a mine, are going to require a fair amount of capital. Um, so to go from where we are today to continue to drill the property, this is something we uh, typically have financed ourselves. We own 100% of the asset, and we've just used the public equity markets to achieve that end, to raise you know, the five, the tens, tens of millions that we've raised. Uh, we've got approximately 35 million of capital invested in the uh, free gold project to date. Um, so over the next, looking forward over the next 12 months, if the uh, equity markets uh, remain strong and good, you know we would continue down that path of uh, having achieved, say, the metallurgical milestones. There'll be other milestones you want to achieve, and then look to raise some capital to fund uh, future drilling uh, with the objective of, of growing the tonnage and growing the ounces, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, that said, uh, in terms of overall strategy, we we believe we're sitting on a very sizable uh, deposit, um, and we think it probably uh, is going to be of interest to uh, major producers down the road. And uh, we need to also consider the amount of capital that uh, a mine of uh, or deposit of this size might require to turn it into a mine. And you know, this is going to be a multiple of hundreds of millions of dollars. So obviously, given our market cap size, we need to be cognizant that um, you know junior miner may not be the best guy to uh, end up being the uh, the construction and end up being the producer of, of the uh, of the ore and the ounces. So we have um, begun to uh, look at uh, potential joint venture partners, and I think what we would like to do is, uh, in parallel with uh, developing the project over the next six uh, to twelve months, also. Uh, look at um, potentially tying up um, part of the project with uh, a partner who can assist us. So we'll start that process. Um, you know, we'll see whether or not that uh, what it leads to, but it'll give us give us an option uh, that if the equity markets are weak, uh, that we can at least potentially turn to a partner to work with um, down the road. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And if uh, the price of gold keeps going up. Uh Hopefully the markets uh, at least uh, won't go down anymore and probably will go higher. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really exciting news because uh, you're sitting on something major and it sounds like it's only going to get better. Uh, as far as the company's finances at the present time, how did they look? Well, we actually raised some money um, about uh, within the last month. Uh, we raised a million dollars. Um and you know, our stock's actually done pretty well on the back of that. So we're now fully financed, really through to um, 
uh, late second quarter next next year, 2013, uh, which enables us to do a number of things. One is obviously we can complete our metallurgical uh, work, uh, drilling and exploration program for this season, uh, and then very importantly move forward with a, a key milestone, um, which we'll, we'll be um, putting out a, a first uh, economic assessment or engineering study, which is called the preliminary economic assessment. Sure. Um, so once we've got the final metallurgical results, we can uh, and update uh, our uh, uh, sort of scoping study with those numbers, and um, we'll start work on that PEA uh, and look to have that out at some point uh, in 2013, which again, I think would be a key milestone for the company being able to demonstrate the economic value, um, the net present value of the property. And obviously we'd hope to see that that was a, uh, a large enough number that uh, compares very favorably to, say, our current market cap. Yeah, it sounds, uh, sounds really exciting and uh, sounds like you've got a full plate, to, you know, raising the capital necessary, building the relationships to exploit the properties, the projects, and, and eventually getting it into production as well as still uh, maintaining an exploration program, huh? Well, you know, the property is very large. Uh, we've got 200 uh, square kilometers, which is uh, roughly three times the size of Manhattan in, uh, in New York. So it's a big property. We've got multiple zones uh, where we've uh, got existing uh, 43 101 compliant multiple uh, resources uh, and then we have two uh, or three other zones where we started uh, drilling uh, and have uh, certainly found some very interesting mineralization um, we have another zone called Tinta uh, which is on the uh, eastern end of the property and um, you know we've got some higher grade material there um, so you know the, the fact that we've got multiple kind of deposits and multiple uh, discoveries on the, the property, which remains very large, does certainly give us some options uh, in developing the company further. You know whether it's uh, focusing just on the revenue nucleus uh, gold dominant porphyry, or whether we, over time, can uh, look at some of these other areas. For example, Stoddard, where we've had some pretty interesting copper drill results uh, going back over over the years. So we're excited by the property, um, and you know it's it's a great location with uh, close access to uh, electricity grid, and uh, we're on a government-maintained road. So again, the infrastructure is very um, advantageous for us compared to a number of other groups up in the northern part of Canada, where you know logistics is key. If you can kind of get your get your uh, drill drills and uh, equipment in and out because you have a road, you're obviously going to be saving a lot of expense on drilling. So our drilling costs are very low compared to other companies. Yeah, that definitely is a plus. Well, it sounds like 2013, uh, the road ahead, it's going to be some major major breakthroughs hopefully this year. And uh, if we have a cooperative uh, precious metals market, so much the better. So people want to find out more about you, about Northern Free Gold Resources. Where do they go? Well, we've got a website, um, www.northernfreegold.com. And on that website, you've got on the home page a uh, corporate presentation, uh, which you can download. There's a more detailed technical presentation for geologists, and a fair amount of information about the uh, deposits we have. And um, uh, so that would be the primary source uh, for uh, potential, uh, potential investors to take a look at. All right. Well, hey, John, it's been great speaking with you, and thanks for sharing that with us. And we'll be following Northern Free Gold, and hopefully uh, the value, the market will come to realize the value, as did you. Kerry, I've enjoyed the conversation. Uh, look forward to catching up uh, in the future. All right. Bye. Thanks. Be well.